um, that we're starting now. I'm just going to recap and start it from the top if you bear with me. Hey, again, I'm Alex Beatty, Divorce Prep Coach, aka The Divorce Planner. I love this series that I have in conversation with where I talk to different professionals from every spectrum of the divorce niche. Today, my guest is Fiona Kong. Fiona has come up with a brilliant product to help I, one of the most delicate parts of the divorce process, if you have children, and that is transition time, right? You know, the idea of going from one home to two can be really overwhelming no matter what age you are as a child. And having tools to be able to navigate that time so it goes more smoothly, especially if you're younger and it's harder for you to communicate, really makes a huge positive impact, not only for your child, but for co-parenting. <laughs> And so with that, I just want to introduce and say thank you so much for joining me today, Fiona. No, thank you for having me on. It's such a pleasure to have this conversation with you. Really important it, topic. It so is. And what I will say, what I love is Fiona and I both come to this work from a really deeply personal place. Um, and I find when I connect with other people in the divorce niche who have actually experienced it and then you know, you had this light bulb moment of creating this wonderful product and I did the same thing, right? With the divorce planner, <laughs> we've walked in your shoes <laughs> as well as gotten a lot of mileage as professionals. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna ask Fiona a couple of questions, but if you have a question about divorce, about transition, about any tips you're looking for, helping make it easier with your kids, please drop it in and we'll get to, we'll get to them after this conversation, which will last about 20 minutes. Um, so now I want to kind of go back to where I was, which was, can you tell us a little bit of the origin story, what the catalyst was for creating Home Sweet Homes Journal? Yes. So the time was um, when we decided to separate, my son was two and a half, so really young. And I think, you know, there's a plethora of issues when you're newly separated. Um, and at that time, like at that young of an age, like he couldn't share with us what was going on. And, you know, when you're a parent, you want to know those milestones. And, you know, we were, um, you know, like potty training, like trying new foods, like just those details in your child's life that you're like, I really hate missing out on this. It, it pained me, right? Um, so at the same time, I had also been laid off from my job, and this was right before COVID. So COVID happened, and I basically was, like, sitting at home and, you know, I'll quickly go through this, but, like, going through, like, how I ended up here, right? Like, it was, like, what made me get here? I went through all my childhood trauma. I was like, gosh, you know, like, if there's one thing I want to do, it's really support my child's mental health because I had such – traumatic issues from my childhood they, they weren't divorced mm -hmm. but they should have been and like all of that like it was left such a like this kind of scarred me and it and into adulthood i had really serious issues that i'd never dealt with until this happened and you're like oh my god like if i can prevent that you know in my child i want to do it so um, going back to like how it started, like I was unemployed, we were in COVID and I went to a dollar store and I saw this little planner. It was, it was like $2 at the dollar store. And I was like, let me just like write what happened at our house. Like it was like just a very, there's not a lot of space, but yeah. having some information about your child's life, mm -hmm. about, you know, as I said, we were probably training what he was eating was just really useful for us. And, um, by the time I ended up like starting the journal, like because I was like, there's nothing out there for this young age of kids who don't have can't use electronics, right? Like, um, like, and they can't communicate what's going on, so they need a tool to help them. Um, so I was like, all right, when I got this back and I was like able to read about my son's life, I was like, oh, this is wonderful. Like, I love it. So I started incorporating these other things where I'm like okay, how does he feel today? Like, that was a big portion of it. Um, just understanding what his experience was, um, going back and forth between houses. So that's kind of like the little birth story of, you know, love it. my home and, homes. And you shared so many wonderful personal details. Thank you so much for that transparency. I think that one of the, um, 
one of the best things to come out of these conversations I have with different people about divorce is letting people out there know you're not alone. These feelings you're having, you know, and, and divorce can be a very isolating experience, you know, so to be able to share kind of all of that as you generously did is so important because I know it's really going to resonate with somebody out there. And what you said about kind of, again, it's, 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 it's opportunity, it's real life um, situation that then led to the creation of this great journal. And immediately, you know, you touched on the fact that, yeah, look, even if you are going through a divorce and you know you should be getting a divorce, it's the right thing for you, it's the right thing for the family, because two happy people is always the goal, right? Two happy people equals two happy parents. And that's who we're rooting for, right? That's who we want. So being able to kind of like turn something that is hard, even in the most kind of like secure positions, look, when you're not spending time with your kid, it kind of sucks at the beginning. It really is hard. And I think it's absolutely brilliant and so simple what you did to be able to share this. And it doesn't matter necessarily what your level of communication is with your co-parent, because this is really about the kid. Um, and it's wonderful to do in your home when you have the child and then to receive it when that kid comes back to you. Yeah, it brings an element of cohesiveness for everyone. And I think there's so much, it feels so disjointed when you're like, okay, your half, your half of your life is there, but over here, these are the things we do. And I'm like, but I want to know about your other half of the life. And I, that's uh, so important to, um, you know, when you're a parent, you to have that big, bigger picture. Yeah, I think that's wonderful. And I, I love that the Home Sweet Homes journal also is a, a very tactile experience. So if you're dealing with younger kids, it's kind of lining up with where they are, where they are could be in drawing a picture, where they are could be in clipping out and pasting something, right? And then you're like, oh, well, why is this here? Which starts a conversation and it allows them to communicate maybe beyond what they, the skill set they have even yet. Definitely. And, you know, just that um, element of circling the faces, because that was a huge part of it. Like, so just for the uh, listeners here, um, there is a daily feelings exercise for each day. It's a, it's a journal that has space for you can write in every single day. And every single day has today I am with and it has where you write in whatever parents home. Um, and then we have under under that there's five faces. So how they feel. Um, I just wanted to get my son thinking about, you know, was he upset today? Was he sad? Was he frustrated? Was he happy to like very basic? And it's like any child can do that. And then you add in the vocabulary, right? To say like, I was upset today because, you know, like, so I think it's just getting like starting from like square one, but like slowly building on elements so your child can like communicate these things to you. Um, because you can't help them if you don't know what's wrong. It's it's so true. And you're setting this great kind of like frame of reference for being able to communicate, getting comfortable with talking about feelings, getting comfortable with, you know, um, being able to uh, take some time to to say I'm feeling a certain way at such a young age that they it's going to really impact them in a positive way for the rest of their lives. Yeah. So, I mean, I know that it's, that's the macro version of it and what you created again, because this journal came from a place of need that you saw wasn't kind of being catered to in the way you were looking for. It solves such a beautiful, you know, beautiful problem in a way that has like a ripple effect of, of benefits. Um, I'm going to jump in really quickly and just ask you, what do you see as some of the biggest kind of issues that parents face during kids transitioning between two households? Oh gosh. Like, I think I was like, where do you even start? Um, but I think for par us parents, it's like, how do we support our child's experience? and I think you can only do that by knowing what they're going through I think it's such a hard thing like my son still has hard days where noticeably I see him come back and he is so irritable and cranky and I'm like oh oh god like like what do I do <laughs> so <laughs> um 
so it's like we plan nothing <laughs> on that days. You know, we try to have a routine um, and just get it to be like a very simple and like, I don't want to say like comfortable, but like make it easy for them, like in whatever way possible. So, and I, I do think like um, just that challenges, you know, we say that kids are resilient a lot and that's true. But as I keep on saying, like, if you don't know what they're struggling with and oftentimes like it can just be a simple question. Like I always check in with my son, like, how is it going with two homes? Like what's hard about it for you? Is the schedule okay? You know, like simple questions like that. Like, you know, once they get to a certain age, like it's gets, you know, you get feedback from them. I, I like that you brought up ages because, you know, depending on what age your child is, they might need different things, but we had, um, we had somebody drop in the comments, such a great idea. I feel like I could even use this for my 16 year old child. And the answer is yes, it might look a little bit different, but it's true. I mean, I'm, I'm you know, no, I'm clearly not a child and something like this can even benefit. Like I said, you're laying groundwork for, for that kid to understand how to express themselves. And to be resilient, to build resilience, you have to go through some things, but if you're not communicating it, right, then then you're not gonna get the tools to get you to a point where you're building that resilience. I, I'm just like mm -hmm. over the moon with this product. <laughs> I will say going back to the, to the to the transition time of it all, I think something that you mentioned is very important to expand on it, and that is depending on the age where your child is, you're gonna see even if everything was fine at the other parent's house, there is still a transition period. Your child will act out and depending on what age they are, that could result in maybe a little tantruming and you're not sure where it's coming from or defiance in some way. Maybe it's um, provoking you a little bit, you know, all of those things are normal and being able to do what you were saying, Fiona, which is carve out space. Of, first of all, have that awareness that you're going to need to carve out space on those transition days and just be open to knowing, you know, something weird might happen and I need to prepare myself that that is a, can be an emotional reaction just from going from one house to the other. Mm -hmm. Yes, be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> totally, be prepared. Um, so another question I had was um, specifically, how does the Home Sweet Homes journal work? Oh, great question. So basically, it is, you know, this tangible physical book um, that ideally kids take back and forth with them between homes. And, you know, we want everyone to participate. Like, we want this to be an open journal where, you know, this is the one thing that my son like him this and his pokemon stuffy is like the two things he always takes back and forth with him like this has his schedule that we review before each each week right because if there's any changes um he likes to know like i don't like to surprise him he doesn't really do well with last minute changes who does um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we try to like give him as <laughs> yeah give him as much advanced notice as possible but um so you know there's that planner piece where here let me try to show you on my folks but um right now you sent me like a preview of it and it, it's just so detailed but it's also it, it looks like fun to do this does not look like a chore or homework you know well that's the thing it's like i don't i want it to be um, like it feels like a group project because if it's all on the kid and it should not be all on the kid like we are the parents we need to be supporting our kid like when my son's like I don't feel like journaling then I'm like okay I'll write in it I don't f feel like putting it in the calendar I will do it. it um and I was like but he's gonna get there right he's eventually when he's like in his teenage years he's gonna have his own you know by himself completely yeah. and I'm like this is prepping him for that um, but for right now, I'm like, do it with your child. Please do it with your child because it's not on them. Like, they're kind of, you know, they're here in this situation and we need to support them. So basically a month starts off with like um, an affirmation. So this was our last year's like, I can do hard things. Yeah. Um, there's like a child and parent activity that reinforces the affirmation and then a monthly calendar. Um, and then this is our, our handwriting is like, chicken scratch 
Um, but basically, you know, we write in like what happens and um, here's where it says who he's with and um, let's see the, uh, how he's feeling. So, so you could see like Papa, mom, mom. It's um, so beautifully laid out and detailed, but it doesn't feel overwhelming. Like I'm looking at this page, rules keep me safe and teach me how to be responsible. These are rules I follow at both my homes, so there's no confusion, and then that you're able to list them or you do that with your child. I mean, there's so much beautiful thought laid out that this feels fun, and I do love that it's tactile. It's something that they're taking from one place to another as opposed to an app because um, it's just, you have more opportunity to actually, I, I can see it in the example you showed me, your kid is more creative. Like I see crayon in there, I see stickers in there. You know what I mean? It really lets their imagination flourish. Yeah, I mean, really, and it's, people are like, oh, it's a blank journal, like, what do I even write about? And I was like, so we generally, like when he was younger, we just wrote about our son's day. And I have a lot of journal ideas, but um, now that my son's older, he's almost eight, we do a gratitude entry. Um, I write a note to him every Friday. Like usually nothing happens. Like it's a regular day at school and he doesn't feel like journaling. So I write a note to him. Um, and then it's, it's just like we junk journal. So we put in like receipts and things like that. So it really is like, you know, I put in photos, I love you know, um, so it's really any, however you want to document your child's life. And when you get to do that with your co-parent, in a way that is you two are coming together for your child and it's like that's what the feeling i want for kids to say like even though my parents are separated i still feel like i know that my parents love me and right like yeah. just just that alone is like i think you have such a leg up on life when you have your parental support <laughs> because at the bottom line is mom and dad or dad and dad or mom and mom might be divorced, but we're still a family, right? That doesn't mean that everybody has to be kumbaya and getting along. What it says is we put the kid first. We let them know that we are a team and that every decision we make is for the benefit of that kid, no matter what, no matter what. And I think that is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I know we're buttoned up against the 20 minute time here, but I just have um, one quick question. What is the ideal age range for the journal? So I think age four is the youngest you could start. Um, kids can circle the feelings. They can participate in, you know, like they like my son started off like watching me write. Um, so I think four was like a great age to begin the journey. Um, and then I would have um, kids as old as like 11 using it. So elementary school age is perfect. Great. That's even a lot going into the middle. School. I think that's great. Um, for for anybody who's joined us a little bit late, I'm Alex Beatty, divorce prep coach. My guest today has been Fiona Kong of Home Sweet Home Journal, a beautifully written and laid out journal that a child of divorce can take as they transition between homes, share with the parents um, as an activity to do to help with transition and to help keep that other parent kind of in the know about what's going on, helping them express feelings, be able to communicate and really create some beautiful moments together. For anybody who's just starting their divorce journey, please head over to my blog. It's packed with lots of resources, including this conversation, which is gonna go up immediately after. And you'll also be able to watch or listen from the beginning on my Instagram page and YouTube. Fiona, if someone is interested in purchasing the journal, how can they do so? Um, so my website is homesweethomesjournal.com. I'm also on TikTok shop, um, same handle, Home Sweet Homes Journal. I'm going to be tagging her in everything, and I highly, highly recommend. It is rare that I see something that really just feels like it, it is such a value add, and it's so beautifully done. Congratulations, Fiona. Oh. I wish you all the success. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Yeah. So sweet. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. I'll be back in two weeks with financial planner, Joseph D. Cruz. We're gonna talk about assets and divorce and we're gonna be taking your questions again. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Fiona. Thanks, Alec. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye.